So for my new series, I really sat down and thought, what part of Football Manager do I enjoy the most? Or what period do I enjoy? You know, everybody loves seeing taking a team from the 10th division and getting to the Premier League and then competing in Europe. That is always fantastic. Or taking a team already in the top division, like Sheffield United or Arsenal, and then getting them to compete at the top of the table. But I think the period that I enjoy the most is when you're in the second division, like the Championship, getting to the top league in that very first season where you've basically signed a whole new squad. You've, been, you've had to look for bargains because you don't have that much money compared to the rest of the league. And you're signing players who you wouldn't necessarily sign if you were competing at the top. I think that is my favourite and that is going to be the basis for this series. So how it's going to work is this. We're going to start as an unemployed manager and then try and find a job either in League One but ideally in the Championship in England. We then build our squad, take our time, get promoted to the Premier League and then I have one season with that club in the Premier League to see how far I can take them. So the only way we leave a club is if we either get sacked or after our first season in the Premier League and then we'll keep a leaderboard to see which club we've managed to do the best with. We'll try and flood the Premier League with clubs that we have taken there and ended up building a solid enough foundation that they can steer. And basically just having a lot of fun with it, you know, we'll take them to the Premier League, we'll resign after one season, we'll take over another championship club and do it all again. And we'll see how far we can get with it. So I've already set up my game and this is my manager, obviously myself. I've set myself to be a championship level manager to give me the best possible chance of being able to get a club as early as possible. We are unemployed and we'll always remain unemployed and we'll stick with this manager. We'll never start a new save um, or start a new manager to be able to take over a club. It will always be natural. We will always have to apply and interview for jobs. Um, we will never start again to take over a new club. Now, when you very first start a save on Football Manager 2020, the only available manager's job for the championship is Barnsley. So that is what we are going to do right now. We are going to apply for this job, declare interest, and see if we can get the Barnsley job. There could very well be our first team. If it's not to be Barnsley, we've obviously got to play on a lot longer um, as the season starts and then take over a team that eventually sacks their manager. But hopefully, if we can get the Barnsley job, we've got a summer transfer window to do and we'll start straight away. We've got the interview, boys. I'm not going to show you because it's ultimately very boring, but I'll let you know how it goes. Well, after a successful interview, Barnsley have approached me to join the club. They have a few conditions in the club culture and the five-year plan that are pretty interesting for a start of a save so not signing players over the age of 28 i don't do that anyway sign players under the age of 23 spot on entertaining football's fine under the age of 20 for the future champion using the club's youth system is absolutely fine as well self-sustainability is always an important one uh, maximum one-year contracts with players over the age of 30 buying the current stadium which will probably not in my time now let's be honest and work within the wage budget we will start the negotiations we will accept the offer of 15 grand per week and we are now the manager of Barnsley. So say hello to Barnsley in terms of the squad then. Well, let's start about the transfers because that's the most interesting part. We've only got two and a half million pounds and only a sliver of wages left to be able to play with. Uh, in terms of our first 11, I don't even know anything about this Barnsley squad. Whether it's any good, pretty bad. Alex Mowat is one of the highest rated players. He looks pretty good in central midfield English as well. He will definitely be one of our key players alongside Corley Woodrow, a decent striker. What's a four-star player for us? A good player for most uh, championship sides, which is absolutely fine. Um, it looks like we've got some potential here with uh, Bambo Diaby, a Spanish centre-back, 21 years old, three-and-a-half-star current, five-star potential. He looks okay. <laughs> he doesn't. None of these players look like they're going to be worldies or potentially Premier League players in the end. Uh, we've got Mads Anderson. Have we got a lot of centre-backs? A lot of... Uh, Pretty highly rated centre-backs anyway. A couple there. Three. A good right-back. Um, decent keeper. A decent defensive mid. I'm going to have to build a tactic. Figure out what I want from this squad. Um, where things need replacing. But all that's going to be off-screen. You're going to see their first game in the league this season. Which will be against Fulham in the 3rd of August. So we've only got less than a month to be able to do all of our transfer business. And settle on a tactic and formation. But um, exciting times. I'll see you shortly. So it is to be Barnsley who we take on our first Yo-Yo Man adventure. I've played through the summer transfer window. We have actually already played the first game of the season because 
I had to transfer a bit of business at the back end of the window that I really wanted to get through before I came back. But we'll quickly go over some of the club things and what is actually happening at Barnsley. So we are expected, or hoping to expect, to avoid relegation from the Championship this season. And that is our target. The squad, after thorough examination throughout the summer, isn't too great. It's not going to be challenging for the title, promotion or the playoffs. I think the best we can realistically hope for is a mid-table finish. But avoiding relegation is a low enough expectation where I think we can comfortably meet that, hopefully due to some of the signs we have made. Uh, the FA Cup and the League Cup are not going to be a priority for me whatsoever. Um, ideally, we would look to get, get uh, pretty far on in the FA Cup if we could, just to help boost our finances as they aren't the greatest. And But otherwise, we are just looking to avoid relegation this season. That is the only thing that we are targeting. In terms of the finances, then, we do have an £8.6 million balance with £1.2 million still remaining in the transfer budget after our business. We're spending around £162,000 per week on wages, which does leave us with a nice little comfortable gap of about £27,000 available, should we need any future signings. And that brings us to the signs of the summer. We'll go for our transfer history, and this is what we have done. So, we've sold Connor Chaplin to Sunderland for £1 million, a striker who found himself surplus to requirements and... Getting his wages off the bill and bringing in one million was absolutely fantastic. The same happened with Patrick Schmidt. We sold him to Stoke for £725,000. Again, wages, transfers, fantastic. Mamadou Tiam, the exact same, £185,000 for him. We brought in a couple of new left wingers, which meant that we needed to free up some um, squad, states, uh, squad spots. So he found himself on the chopping block. And we ended up loaning out these four players, all 100% loaned uh, wages paid which was the ideal. I mean, it only saved us maybe £8,000 altogether for these four. Well, that is when you're struggling for finances. That is the things that can sort of make a difference. The rest of these businesses all happened before we came to the club. And that brings us to the inns, the first of which was Bruno Costa from FC Porto for £475,000. We initially brought him in thinking he might be our starting left winger, but that is going to change. But otherwise, he is capable of playing all across the attack and, and including the centre of midfield should he be required. And I mainly see him as potentially being a left winger or a attacking centre of midfielder. He's not necessarily a starter anymore, down to some of the other signs. But at 475k, he was transfer listed. And he's relatively, his wages of 7.5k is one of the highest in the squad, but I'm fine with that. And I'm happy to have been able to bring him in. The next one was Will Patchen. Brought in by my director of football. Let's move on to Rian Brewster from Liverpool. He's going to be playing back up to our striker. I really want to force Corley Woodrow into the squad. Maybe Rian Brewster would be the better option for this season. But as Corley Woodrow is our own property. And part of this is really building up our players to be able to sell them. To be able to fund a good charge in the first season of the Premier League. I'm not going to be playing Rian Brewster too much. He did come off the bench in the first game and didn't really do anything. Next up was Beachor, who we signed on a free transfer, an attack and midfielder in the centre, who probably will start the majority of the games. He's got fantastic technicals. His mentals are okay as well. Physically, he's a little bit lacking, but that's fine for an attack and midfielder. He can play on both wings as well, should he be required. And a three-star, four-star on a free, it seemed like a no-brainer, and it was an area where we needed to improve. Luca Navarro, another one brought in by my director of football, which I was more than happy with. He actually looks pretty good. Two and a half, two star current, four and a half star potential striker. English free transfer. He sits in the under 23s. Maybe look to loan him out next season and see how he progresses. And this is the biggest transfer of them all. Jordan Ibe has joined on loan from Bournemouth. Now we had to pull some strings in the financial department to be able to see this one through. 15 grand a week was too rich for us to be able to offer. Oh, that, that's what we did offer. I think they wanted half. So it was about 18k they wanted. So we managed to get him in for 15k and 35k per month to be able to bring him to the club. But he is absolutely fantastic for this level. He will be our starter on the left-hand side. And I'm hoping with his pace, he will be the one that is able to make a difference between us staying in the division and falling through the trap door. In terms of our tactics, then this is what we've settled with. We went for an attack and Gigi and Bresson tactic which you'll probably recognise from the Arsenal save. It is a little bit different though. Um, we are looking for the overlap on each side. We have brought our fullbacks back to uh, steer back more than the would with the Arsenal tactic, purely down to how defensively limited we are. 
we don't want them to leave too many gaps when they're going forward. We've got the deep line playmaker in there who will be uh, Alex Mort, who will sit and hopefully be able to dictate the player from deep. And then pretty standard inverted wingers advance forward. The tactic will evolve as the season goes on, but this is what we played in the first game of the season, which was against Fulham, which we drew 1-1. It was at home. Cameron McGeehan ended up putting us in, in front inside 39 minutes, but apparently in the 68th minute ended up equalising for Fulham and they took the point. And so that season sitting in mid-table after the first game, which isn't too bad, you know. We're not going to be... Um, Fulham are one of the best sides in the league. We're not going to be challenging at the top. So to get a point out of them is not too shabby. As you can see by the season preview, we are predicted to finish bottom alongside the other newly promoted sides in Luton and Charlton. But I think we're going to do better than that. I really, really do. And Fulham were predicted to finish top. So to get a point out of them, fantastic. So for today's game, then it is going to be away from home against Sheffield Wednesday, who are expected to finish around 16th position, which is actually the sort of position I'm targeting. So we'll see how we get on against them today. We will get into our team selection and see what our um, assistant manager throws up for us to start with. So unfortunately, one of our major centre-backs is currently injured and will miss this game. So this is how we're going to line up today. Rad Linger in goal, Cavaria, Diaby, Sibic and Ben Williams in the defence. Our defence is where we are at weakest, particularly in terms of depth. Ben Williams, I was looking for a left-back, but I've decided uh, the options that were available weren't value for money. And with his potential to grow, I'm going to give this boy the starting spot. Alex Mort and Cameron McGeehan in the centre of midfield. That will become a familiar partnership. Um, as they are our two best central midfielders at the club. Malik Wilkes will start on the right-hand side. He is a very, very capable right winger with potential to grow at only 20 years old. We need to give him game time. Bruno Costa is going to start in the attacking midfield role in the centre overhead of Bicho, purely because we paid money for him. <laughs> and I want to see how he performs. Jordan Ibe will, of course, start on that left-hand side with Corley Woodrow leading the line. So Sheffield Wednesday come out with a 4-2-3. Uh, the likes of Keane Westwood, Stephen Fletcher, familiar to me as a Sunderland fan. Uh, they are expected to finish in the mid-table, so you would think they have the better squad than us. But we are attacking team. We might get beat 6-0 some games, but we're going to stick with it. And Because I, I think on Football Manager, the best form of defence is attack. And let's get into the game. First highlight of the game. No, it's not. Cancel that. This is the first highlight of the game. Left-hand side, Williams to take the throw in for us. Bruno Costa's drifted out wide there. Finds Jordan Ibe to McGee and to Alex Mort. Is he going to go for the strike? He's not. He finds Kavara on the right-hand side. Ball's whipped in. Jordan Ibe. It's somebody. <laughs> Please. We've hit the post. Sheffield Wednesday on the attack. This time the player back into the midfield. But Bruno Costa gets a great challenge in. We can't capitalise on the break though as they bring it forward again down this right-hand side for them. It's Adu Bajo on the right-hand side. Brings it into reach. Ball's played into Stephen Fletcher. He gets his first goal of the season. The first goal of the game. Sheffield Wednesday a one. Barnsley nil. Not ideal. So despite going 1-0 down, the match stats are looking actually quite favourable in, in our favour. But um, it's obviously not leading to many clear-cut chances. We'll keep we'll keep things out there, although for the time being, five minutes to go at half-time. Sheffield Wednesday go 2-0 up, and that's not offside either. Massimo Luongo with his first goal of the season. Uh, this is going to be difficult. You can just tell it straight away, can't you? Bannon playing the free kick. It's Bates wins the header. Luongo beats the offside trap and gets the goal to put Sheffield Wednesday 2-0 up. There is a highlight straight after the goal, though, so an I I in an ideal world, we get a goal here to get into half-time at 2-1. Wilkes brings it down this right-hand side, gets dispossessed, but he retains the possession, which is all that we need. On the left-hand side now, William plays the ball in Woodrow to Jordan Ibe. Jordan Ibe. That is what we are wanting from this man. He is a potential Premier League uh, winger. He needs to prove himself at Barnsley this season if he's to win the contract with Bournemouth or to win a place in a Premier League side. So hopefully he's got something to prove at us and that is the th hopefully a sign of things to come. 2-1. So we have dominated that first half going by the match stats but we find ourselves going in Sheffield Wednesday 2, Barnsley 1. I'm not changing an absolute thing. Hopefully we're a little more clinical in this second half and we can get ourselves at least a point. First highlight of the second half, 60 minutes in. Williams picks up a loose ball in the midfield and we feed it over to the right hand side with Cavaria. Can he whip the ball in? He can. Jordan Ibe's shots blocked and <laughs> they managed to get it clear. I do struggle to speak sometimes. So with 20 minutes to go we are going to have to make some changes. 
Uh, Costa's not having the greatest game in behind Corley Woodrow, so we will look to get him off Albicho. Uh, we'll have to keep our centre-backs the way they are. We are really struggling in terms of the strength and depth in there. Um, who else is coming off? Wilkes can come off. We'll bring on Luke Thomas. He's our backup right winger. Um, they're pretty similar in terms of the ability, really. It could be either or starts each game. But um, we'll brought him on now. We're going to have to start pumping this, start running out the defence, hopefully being able to get uh, some options here. We're not really <laughs> we're not really doing much in the final five minutes. We're going to go very attacking in the hopes that we can get a goal. But we'll have to wait and say the time ticks away. Only two minutes remaining. And that's going to be it. Despite domination in the match stats, we fall to a 2-1 defeat to Sheffield Wednesday. Disappointing. But we played well. We played well. And hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But there we are. Our first game of the season on the live com. We get beat. So a lot of information to digest there. In terms of the next episode, it will be Leeds and Nottingham Forest, who we will play to hopefully be able to get our first win in between. But if you're looking forward to this new series, a little bit something different by me, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.